welcome to Project Geo Spatial. Uh, we are in Pasadena, California at the IGARS 2023 conference, uh, which is hosted by GRSS. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Kamal Sarabandi, and uh, we are going to learn a little bit more about who you are and what you do and how you're involved with the uh, organization. So here we right. thank, thank you, Adam. Uh, my name is Kamal Sarabandi, as you said. I'm a professor in the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science at the University of Michigan. Uh, I have been involved with IGARS and um, Geoscience and Remote Sensing Society for more than uh, four decades already. I started as a graduate student member and I continued, you know, being a member and participating and, you know, going through IGARSES and uh, also I have been involved with the ADCOM member. This is the administrative committee of the society and I have done a lot of different things. Uh, at the end I became the president. I was president of the society for the years of 2015 and 2016. Great. In your own words, can you talk about what uh, GRSS is and, uh, and, and how is that connected to the uh, IGARS conference? Yes. Uh, Geoscience and Remote Sensing Society, this is IEEE Geoscience and Re uh, Remote Sensing Society, is an organization of professionals uh, of a variety of different backgrounds, but all of us have the same goal, to monitor the Earth as a system, to understand the processes that would affect life on our planet. And this society has been basically uh, at the forefront of science and technology to enable us to observe and predict some of the um, you, know, um, you know things that would affect our life on this planet, including global warming, climate change, and things like that. Excellent. So, uh, connecting to the conference here, uh, this conference, uh, from what I've learned, is uh, sort, of, sort of the uh, social collaboration arm of the GRSS. People, you, you bring everybody together once a year and uh, pull in all the knowledge uh, and what everybody's learned, and this is a chance for everybody to collaborate. Is that correct? That is very true. Um, actually, you know, conferences like this uh, will bring in people together so that we could share our knowledge. Uh, you cannot do problems like this on your own, no matter how smart you are or how, how versatile you are, you need to have collaboration, collaboration with expertise within your own field, collaborations with expertise from related fields that affects you know, what you do at the end. And this conference allows people to network, to find each other's work, um, to establish collaboration, um, to talk about common interests, you know, there are also people from different parts of the world and, you know, since we are all connected through, you know, the life we have on this planet, you know, a lot of things that we do are very similar. Sometimes we use these opportunities for inter international collaboration to make sure that we don't repeat the same work. At the same time, we, whatever we do would be shared so that you know it could advance and enhance you know what we do also organization provides different platforms so for example um, publications is a major part of what the, the society does not necessarily IGARS IGARS we have paper papers and the proceedings that come out and you know that is accessible to all members and uh, members of IEEE but in addition to that when you come here you meet the editor-in-chiefs you meet you know your colleagues you know and then you you can do um, publication disseminate knowledge so that uh, these activities are recorded and archived. Excellent. So uh, let's talk about some of your experiences at IGARS. Can you talk about maybe some highlights that you've seen at previous conferences and maybe some highlights that you've seen at this conference so far? Yes. So um, as I mentioned, you know, I have been attending IGARS since 1986. And, uh, and I don't think I have missed any of them except maybe during the COVID year. So uh, that was, uh, that was um, um, you know, the downside of what happened. And of course, it happened to a lot of different things that we do. But uh, this is the first uh, fully in-person 
IGARs after COVID. And the unique thing about it is the enthusiasm of the people coming off of, you know, these COVID years to this con conference. There is a lot of energy among the participants, you know, sessions are full. This is perhaps one of the biggest IGARs in terms of number of people attending this conference. So uh, it is highly uh, organized um, thanks to the organizing committee of these IGARs. And uh, I should, uh, you know, mention that we are very appreciative of all their work and effort in organizing this conference so efficiently and so nicely for us. Well, let's take it back. The highlights in terms of technology. What kinds of technology have you seen that really interest you? And, and especially since you said you've been to these since the beginning, I imagine that you've seen some pretty interesting uh, ways that ever, the, the culture or even the community has evolved, right? right. I mean, uh, technically, of course, uh, there are always you can come here and see future missions, concepts for future missions. You know, uh, I attended a number of sessions where people were talking about the new instruments uh, that ESA, NASA, JAXA, other space agencies, uh, ESRO um, are planning and uh, um, working on. And you would learn about these, you would learn about how to get involved in some of these projects in a collaborative manner with others, or you know, these some of these things are at the seed level. So you can have an opportunity to input your ideas into formation of future uh, missions and things like that. So these are all uh, very good and very exciting, you know. And uh, I encourage people who have not attended IGARS in the past, but they're working on any aspects of remote sensing or geoscience to consider coming to IGARS in the future. Well, in terms of this conference specifically, uh, what um, uh, is there a specific technology sensor that uh, has kind of impressed you so far? Uh, yeah, I noticed, uh, for example, uh, Kupernik, this is an uh, ESA mission that they are going to fly uh, a large number of uh, radiometers simultaneously to cover uh, frequencies from very low microwave frequencies all the way to sub terahertz frequencies. And, and this is very unique, provides opportunity to provide simultaneous data for different you know, things that would affect, you know, the whole process, for example, atmospheric, precipitation, soil moisture, wind speed, and all of that. So I think, you know, that is one very exciting mission uh, to come. And I was very impressed by that. And great. So uh, let's see, as we wrap up, I have one final question for you. Uh, so for individuals who are watching this who have never been to an IGARS before, uh, for next year or following years, uh, what you would tell them, come to IGARS, come check it out, why? Yeah, so uh, let me go back and answer this question a little bit at the fundamental level. You know, uh, going back, you know, people, you know, as, as a child, you know, as you grow up, people show and look at, you know, ask you to look at the sky and, you know, refer to that as heavens, you know, and now that we know what the stars are formed by and what is the conditions of, um, um, you know, environmental conditions of these planets are, you would realize that the heaven is here. It's a very thin crust of our planet that constitutes the support for life and livelihood of not only human, but also other species. It is critical, imperative for us to protect the heaven we are living on. And this society and the group of scientists who are engaged in these activities, that is exactly what they are doing. They are trying to monitor this place that is the only known, you know, livable place on, on this, um, you know, universe, at least so far as we know. Uh, we have to protect it. We have to understand what is happening to us. And uh, therefore, I consider these activities amazingly important. Excellent. So, uh, Kamal, thank you for joining me. Thank you for answering my questions. And uh, thank you for giving us some insight of what the conference is about and who GRSS is. Um, I'm Adam Simmons of Project Geospatial. We'll talk to everybody next time. Thank you.